Hi, welcome to Free Spirit and welcome to a new release. Yes, 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 a close-up review of a new release that's not even out yet. So that's how new it is. It's the Oracle of the Celestial Deities uh, by Latea Wang. Now, you might have been uh, familiar with the name Latea Wang because just a few months ago, I did a close-up review of his other deck that just came out of the Oracle of the Mythic Heroes. So um, this is the first deck six months later or something. Here is the next deck that's coming out June 18th. So I'll put the link down below along with his other other links um, but this is the newest deck out June 18th so it's not even out yet but you can pre-order and uh, this is the deck that was out so he's saying you can use the two decks together if you want or alone um, this was the pamphlet Mateo Wang he's so well known he does a lot of oracle decks and tower decks he's an author he's a reader he's an astrologer he puts a lot he also formulated the healing kingdom this is Latea Wang right here he's a professional astrologist tower specialist founder and spiritual counselor of the healing kingdom he offers astrology tarot numer numerology readings um, he's based in Hong Kong he has been doing this a very long time this is the newest release which is out on June 18th Oracle of Celestial Deities okay all his decks, by the way, both decks, they're so inclusive of like mythical um, Roman and Greek mythology. It's always a mix of astrology. Um, here it is. Astrology, astronomy, ancient Greek and Roman mythology. There's just so much information in his decks. That is the common theme that I find. There is just so much. I mean, talk about um, a journey beyond the spiritual wisdom of our earthly realm. Um, yes, with this deck of 20 cards, it's depicted mythical deities from astrology, astronomy, ancient Greek, Roman mythology. It's designed in Art Nouveau style that you can connect with our higher selves, assist us in understanding the important lessons of life that are echoed in the ancient myths of the old. And that is something that I'm finding in both the decks. That's the running theme and there's just a lot of information so much information there are 20 cards here but what i mean about the information that you're going to find in this thick guidebook just for an example each each card say you have neptune here dream illusion and the wish to flow pisces it's going to give the whole story about pisces it's going to give the whole story about neptune it's going to give the whole mythical story behind it all it it's just going to give you the whole mythical story here from about Neptune forces us to into it and access our higher selves and art, mysticism and passion, right? He can inspire renewal and reinvention through the cleansing of old egos. So there you get the whole teaching, illusionary, illusory, illusory, sensitive and gentle. This blue watery planet carries us to the boundless cosmic ocean and world of dreams, right? It goes into the whole thing. That's the teaching. And then what, depending on what kind of reading you're doing, there's the career meaning and the love meaning to it. So here's Uranus, invention, chaos, and the wish to change Aquarius. So it's going to give the whole story behind uh, Uranus. Um, Herald of a new age, mighty Uranus, mistaken for and misunderstood as one of the stars of the heavens. Slowly he moved, dimly he shone, and long brewed revolution. And his revolution was a literal revolution. So you just, it goes on, and it will go on for three pages. And then you'll have the teaching, and you'll have the career meaning of it, and the love meaning of it. You'll just learn so much. It's, it's just jam-packed with a lot of information, as in all his decks. So this, the Oracle of Celestial Dietis. I'll get into the 20 cards. This is the backs. This is, again, it's the intuitive and inspirational uh, system combines the ancient wisdom of the god and goddesses with modern astrology and archetypes to provide you with daily cosmic guidance. This is no more than just a sequel to this other deck. It is rather a sublime transformation soaring beyond the celestial limits, journey outside the spiritual insights of our earthly realm with cards depicting mythical deities derived from astrology, astronomy and ancient Greek and Roman mythology from Venus, the goddess of love and Saturn, the goddess of time to Ceres, the goddess of harvests 
and Vulcan, the god of the forge, you will learn and appreciate the important life lessons that are echoed in the epic legends of the gods. So let's get into it, okay? So that was enough with all the, I'm telling you, there is so much information, and I think that's what I wanted to just first start off with, with even though there's 20 cards in the deck, it's jam-packed with a lot of of information behind um, the cards themselves. And that is a running theme through all his decks. There's just a lot of information. Okay, so this is the sun, center, self, and the wish to shine. Center, self, and the wish to shine. Emotion, instinct, and the wish to protect. Travel, communication, and the wish to adapt. Beauty, value, and the wish to love. And we'll do a bonus reading at the end. We'll see what we get. Passion, action, and the wish to persevere. Liberation, opportunity, and the wish to expand. Karma, control, and the wish to restructure. Dream, illusion, and the wish to flow. Invention, chaos, and the wish to change. Completion, secrecy, and the wish to transform. Sanctuary, purification, and the wish to isolate. Marriage, perspective, and the wish to relate. Mother, stability, and the wish to nurture. Wisdom, strategy, and the wish to lead. Diligence, humility, and the wish to forge. Simplicity, rejuvenation, and the wish to balance. Anxiety, resourcefulness, and the wish to live. Friendship, freedom, and the wish to assist. Desire, playfulness, and the wish to connect. Fear, rejection, and the wish to survive. That was it. That was 20 archetypes. I want to see what we get right now. We're going to do a bonus reading and dive in deep to the guidebook of the Oracle of the Celestial Deities and see what comes out for us right now. So you can get a taste of the guidebook of what I mean by there's so much that goes into the card um, when it comes to the information here. Okay, so let's tap in what message wants. Oh gosh, that was right away. Okay, so let's get into it. That was definitely wanted to be seen. This is Vulcan. Vulcan. Diligence, humility, and the wish to forge. So we are getting diligence, humility, and the wish to forge. So tap into this energy. We're going to get into it. This is Vulcan. And I, like I said, I'm not even familiar with this. So you actually do really learn a lot. Oh, it would flip right to it. So diligence, humility, and the wish to forge is Virgo, pyrite. Okay, so let's get into it. Hypothesized, theorized, predicted, and frequently sought over the centuries between the sun, the furnace, and Mercury, Vulcan as an astronomical object was elusive, quiet, and lost at sea, yet forged his reputation as a blacksmith, forges a sword from metal. Okay, there were mercurial signs of his influence, but none that yielded proof. And then Vulcan's existence... So I put it here, superseded by a man with pearl white hair whose intellect burned as hot as coal. Between space and time are curved, because space and time are curved, leaving no space or time for Vulcan, he was cast down from high thought and with a broken ego sank to but a phantom. Yet still he crafts his magic, despite this dismissal and disbelief he's received. On he strives, the jeweler of the heavens, for as he creates, so he loves, and he needs naught else but his own designs. The Romans knew him as Vulcan, and the Greeks as Hephaestus. Um, I might have been butchering the name there, but it's the son of Zeus and Hera. But for such noble lineage, Vulcan was poorly received. Upon birth, shocked by his impaired appearance, Hera threw him from atop Mount Olympus into the ocean, Hurt in both body and spirit, Vulcan sank to the depths and was raised by ocean nymphs, spirits of nature. The dolphins were his playmates and he collected pearls. And while he never fully recovered from his mother's rejection, he learned much about himself and of the female ways of his guardians. Tender, sensitive, and poetic he became, yet 
introverted and sullen, lacking in confidence. And after discovering fire upon a beach at night, he scooped up a burning coal with a nearby clamshell, intoxicated by its transformative potential. Through studying heat's effect upon elemental materials combined with his artistic talent, Vulcan became a master jeweler with masculine strength to bend elements to his vision and a feminine creative and humble dexterity. He created jewelry of such radiance that it lured and ensnared his unsuspecting mother. Vulcan is a complex soul. For the smithy, hmm, forges cast both chains of bondage and rings of commitment. And the temporary, the tempering of metal requires two steps. First, the fires of the forge, and then the plunging into cold waters. Hot and cold, hard and yielding, masculine and feminine. These are the two sides of Vulcan's currency. This was fitting for Vulcan, who in the heavens, according to astronomy at least, was a thing of beauty ever, even before it was seen. Between the furnace of the sun and the smithy that is molten mercury, there was rumored to exist a planet shrouded in the sun's glare, but implied by impressions made upon Mercury's orbit. Yet even his physical incarnation was cast from the mountaintop, this time by Einstein, whose theories explain Mercury's arc without the need for Vulcan's lore. Humiliated and wounded, Vulcan became an incorporeal ghost. And so it is with our natal charts. Despite such disregard, Vulcan's wrath state can yet sway us, diligent and hardworking, filled with the desire to create, if only for his own sake. He can inspire us to craft both weapons and art, as humble as he is unappreciated, lacking in validation and confidence, molding the exquisite for the exalted, even as he himself is excluded. Wow, just like the burning coal that Vulcan took from the beach and hid within a shell, not all of us are gifted with the flare of Helios or the fire of Apollo or the lure of Aphrodite. Our heat is hidden, clammed up, yet we smolder, hot and silent. We burn within and create without the need for limelight, starlight, or even the light of a parent's smile. Still, we craft for it is through our creations that we are embodied, valued, and loved. You see how deep that is? Okay, so the teaching is the smith god Vulcan, or his Greek counterpart, is a symbol of the industrious, the hardworking, the focused energy of human productivity. Though cruelly tossed from Olympus by Hera, he dedicated his life to the art of metal, metallurgy, metallurgy, <laughs> Sorry, I'm pushing these words. Sculpturing and jewelry making. He was so impressively talented that his mother hastily got back into his good graces and awarded him with a beautiful wife, Aphrodite. The appearance of Vulcan in your reading uh, augurs a period during which your productivity will be enhanced, your mental focus and physical strength increased. This is the moment when you must concentrate on your creations. Vulcan isn't ostentatious. He calls for patience and humility, though sometimes we experience that burning need to feel appreciated and validated. Your craftsmanship will gain public attention in the long run, but you must focus on the process instead of constantly looking for approval. In your reading, when Vulcan appears next to Juno or Venus, Aphrodite, who grew bored of him and took a new lover, <laughs> that's in parentheses. It might be time for you to learn to heal your inner wounds from abandonment, loneliness, and neglect. Are you yearning for more recognition and connection? Are you pretending that you don't need love and companionship so are purposefully burying yourself in work? Work through this complex archetype with extra care. So that is the full meaning. And they're saying in career, there's career and love. Let me just read this to you. The career, if it was for a career reading, in a career reading, Vulcan points to a time when you will be completely submerged in your project productive endeavors and creative arts. The project at hand might need extra attention, patience, and a fine eye for the small details. You might not always see the glamour in your daily operations, but rest assured that the time you have been investing 
is not wasted, as you are unquestionably skilled and conscientious. Vulcan is particularly strong if you work in construction, architecture, engineering, product design, or any job that deals with craftsmanship. Be grounded with your new responsibilities, with all your responsibilities, be grounded. Don't be distracted by other people's negative comments or lack of acknowledgement. Remember, though Ephestus, Ephestus, Oh, I'm so sorry about the names, was abandoned as a baby for his perceived weaknesses. He proved himself through his masterful creations and earned himself an unshakable position among the gods. Your patience, your patience and honest toil will reward you with a great gift soon. So that was your career message. And the love, in love, the appearance of this could be asking you to notice if you are feeling undervalued or taken for granted in your relationships. You could be feeling distant or fearful to express yourself in love because you have been disappointed in the past more often than not. Aphrodite's portrayal of Hephaestus, sorry about the name again, was shocking and traumatic. And though he had done everything in his capacity to please her, making her the finest jewelry in the world, due to past trauma, you could be hearing a negative voice whispering that you are unlovable and don't deserve emotional fulfillment. The first step to work with Vulcan's energy is to find self-love and learn how to trust the people that we love with an open and logical mind. If you can trace these challenges in relationships back to your early childhood and your dynamics with your parents. Don't be afraid to face and find healing through therapy and counseling. Finally, as Hephaestus, oh, I'm so sorry about this name, Hephaestus is such an introverted workaholic, always occupied with his crafts. Remember to communicate and connect with your Venus partner through quality time and fun romantic activities. So that was everything. I read you like three pages. So you got the love, you got the career, you got the teaching, and you got the full, I read all five, six pages. So <coughs> again, we got the card diligence, humility, and the wish to forge. So no doubt, wish to forge ahead, but also the balance that it takes. And even if you feel unacknowledged, oh my goodness, that story that's behind it, the myth that's behind that, I never knew that. I don't know if you did. Um, but that's what's so amazing about all these cards is that you'll learn like the whole myth, the whole story that kind of lends to the meaning. So then you actually have a, a I don't know, when I was reading that, I had a new compassion for this poor guy, right? Like he just got thrown from the mountain. He was in the ocean. He learned how to make jewelry and nobody paid him any mind. Nobody paid him any attention and he's constantly working and getting, right? So um, knowing the story behind kind of you have like a new compassion, which only then you have a new compassion for yourself, right? So that's what I find so amazing about these stories because it's based on an archetype and then you kind of like your heart opens to that archetype and then actually that archetype is part of yourself. When you see, you know, you see yourself in that part. And so I just found that ama like amazing. You kind of learn in that way with his decks. And I love all the mythical stories. I find it very interesting. It's very unusual. I find it very unique for a Tyrant Oracle deck. Um, this, in this case, an Oracle deck. But to have um, all the mythical stories, the real archetypes and the stories behind it, it's just amazing. From this marriage perspective and the wish to relate put this in the bottom that's almost like seemed like the opposite because he was so isolated and here is the wish to relate I found that so interesting because that was on the bottom of the deck here Juno I just find that really interesting so okay so this was the latest that's coming out June 18th I'll put it in the link in the description box at June 18th you can pre-order it now the new 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 release that's about to come out from Lateo Wang Oracle of the Celestial Deities 20 cards in here a really extensive guidebook and again this is on the heels of a few months ago he came out with the Oracle of the Mythic Heroes he was saying you can use the two together to get even fuller readings they're all like mythical heroes it's all very similar kind of guidebook and um yeah, and either way, you can't go wrong, and I'll leave all the information in the description box. And yes, this has been the close-up review of the new release, Oracle of the Celestial Deities, Mateo Wang. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.